Hello everyone and welcome to a new Mega Drive game dev tutorial for SGDK. In this video I'm going to show you how to update SGDK as well as alter the code you've already written so it works with this new version too. Fortunately from a coding standpoint of what we've already covered, the changes are pretty superficial so it shouldn't take too long. SGDK itself is already a very mature development kit and as you can see we're already on one, version 1 1.8 now so even if the, the creator of it, Steph, were to decide to you know, end his support tomorrow it will still be good enough to create amazing games but it's fantastic that he's still continuing on after all these years and still updating it and upgrading it and making improvements so that an already great development kit gets even better. I'm going to include the link to Steph's Patreon for the SGDK project in the uh, video description below so anyone with the means to do so I definitely encourage you to support him if you can. I think the most interesting improvement in this update is the improvements to the sprite engine. Now the Mega Drive can display up to 80 sprites on the screen at the same time or up to 20 per horizontal scanline. Of course when you're dealing with huge characters like in Final Fight each individual character will be made up of more than one sprite and you can see here he's got 13 character sprites and in total they're made up of 104 hardware sprites. While those hardware limits I mentioned before can't be changed, what can be done is that the way the resources, the sprite resources are allocated can be made more efficient. So for example, if part of a sprite or the whole enemy character is off screen, they're not counted towards that 80 limit and many other improvements too. You'll see that when the 13 sprites, when they start to congregate in the same section of the screen horizontally, that's when you'll see some uh, some sprite flicker even here. but. I think it's <laughs> you never need this many in a in a, a beat em up. So even if you have a four or five, that will normally be fine for a beat em up game, or maybe even six or seven rather than thirteen. So I think this is a really great improvement. My Castlevania Symphony of Night game, although it's, the characters aren't as big as in Final Fight, there will be quite a lot of them. Plus, I use some sprites for some background details, such as the trees, to create another layer of parallax scrolling. And you also have the candles and projectiles. So this will be very beneficial to, for me and beneficial people want to do beat em ups and especially if those who want to do shoot em ups because you have lots of projectiles and ships and so on which can obviously cause some sprite flicker and you don't want a projectile or, or, or ship to disappear because of sprite flicker and then damage the player because that's going to be very frustrating. Since this will be the first tutorial of 2023 I just want to take the opportunity to talk a bit about my own learning goals for this year because after all I'm still something of a beginner at this stuff myself. I've never actually created a game from beginning to scratch in any environment and I'm, I'm relatively new to SGDK myself so there's still a lot of things that I want to learn. One of the main things I wanted to do is to learn how to create these animated background tiles. So. Um, you can see here, although it might not look particularly exciting, what's exciting to me is the flashing uh, pink and yellow tiles. Now, these aren't just a, a quick palette swap, which I know how to do already. These are actually tiles which have been cycled in and out of VRAM. So in this particular scene, the clocks will have this, um, what do you call this, pendulum that goes swings back and forth. And while I could do those as, as sprites instead, animated sprites, the fact that there's so many lined up horizontally will probably mean that when you add the character and enemies in as well, it will it'll go over the 20, you know, 20 sprites per horizontal line limit and that will create some sprite flickers. So for this scene, since I'm doing the marble gallery for the Symphony of the Night game, I really needed to learn how to do these animated background tiles instead. I managed to think of a way to do this myself, but um, after discussing it with, with Steph, the SGDK creator, he said it was a very inefficient way of doing it. So thankfully he's taken the time, been generous enough to give me the time to go through how to actually update the tiles in VRAM one by one in a much more efficient way so it doesn't impact performance. And of course um, I'm going to create a tutorial on this later this year as soon as we're done with doing the, the map tutorials for the large levels. For anyone thinking, oh my god this looks so ugly, don't worry, I know this was just a very quick and uh, dirty conversion I did of the, the PlayStation graphics to get it into my Mega Drive. Um, it's just something I wanted to test, sometimes I do this if I want to test the VRAM limits or just want to play about for example with the uh, backgrounds animations here and when we do the full one obviously Pyron will go through it and do it properly and actually in the next tutorial I will be, since a lot of people have been asking for this, I will be showing you how to take assets from other games and to 
uh, convert them so that they work in the Mega Drive. I'll show you how to do the quick and dirty version like here if you just want to test it out very quickly where it only takes a few seconds and I'll also show you a more involved how to do it uh, properly so it actually looks nice on the on the Mega Drive. Speaking of Pyron and the Castlevania project he has recently put out a video about the game where he answers some frequently asked questions and talks about his own role in it and other people's role in the game too and so definitely check that out if you're interested. Although it's in Portuguese it does have you can use YouTube to do the auto subtitles in other languages and that's that does a good job of so you can understand what's going on although for the English version at least it does make some rather interesting choices of uh, translation sometimes. Okay with that out of the way now let's look how to update SGDK. Now I'll put the link to SGDK in the video description and if you scroll down you'll just see the various changes and improvements that have been made in this version and if you go right down to the bottom that's where you'll find our download link. Once that has downloaded you can simply extract all the files from the zipped folder. Once the folder is extracted the next step is simply to rename the folder SGDK. Now you can select Control C or just copy and we're going to copy that into where we installed SGDK the first time. For me and probably for you too that will be the root folder of the C hard drive. Before we paste the new SGDK folder we just downloaded you can just either delete this old version the old folder or else you can just rename it for example SGDK old and then we can finally paste in the new version. Okay so in terms of updating SGDK we're pretty much done here. Now I know lots of you have been creating your own projects uh, using the previous version of SGDK and in order to make them work the new version you just make, need to make a couple of quite superficial changes. To help demonstrate this I've just created this little mini project. Now you don't need to copy out the code or anything it's just some stuff that we've covered in the previous lessons. I just use it as a demonstration to show you the type of changes you'll need to make in your own little projects too. While this little project was working fine in the previous version of STDK, as soon as you update it you'll get these errors. Although the number one shows up next to problems there's actually at least two problems here as you can see when we try to compile. The first one it says we need to uh, detile user index there's something wrong with that it's undeclared and secondly there's a problem with the sprite in it it says error too many arguments to function spr underscore in it. Thankfully these errors are very easy to fix and the IntelliSense will give you an idea too. We simply replace the uh, tile underscore user index with tile underscore user underscore index. I think the reason that was changed in the latest version of SGTK is simply to make it look a bit nicer so it's a, a very superficial change. Now something a bit less superficial is changing the SPR underscore in it. Remember this was initializing our sprite engine and as I said before the sprite engine has gone through lots of uh, changes in this update. When I did the tutorials on sprites before I said to simply set the three arguments it takes as zero because they don't make much difference anyway but in this version um, Steph has decided to do away with all those uh, arguments anyway so you can't enter any extra information and tell the function to do anything anything different. Simply do spr underscore init and then open the brackets and nothing in the brackets and just close it off with a semicolon. If we now try to compile again although those two problems will be fixed we get another error come up. It's a little bit cryptic it says in function underscore hint undefined reference to hint cb. Fortunately the solution to this is very simple under the src folder there's another folder called boot. Simply left click and delete that boot folder. Then all you have to do is simply save recompile and the boot folder will be recreated by sgdk. As you can see the game now boots up absolutely fine, it's working okay and any projects you had that you created in the previous version of SGDK should be, should be compiling and should be running fine now too. Now for anyone bothered with by the fact that Sonic's appearing in front of the foreground layer in that scrolling there, uh, just a little bonus just how to change the priority to make sure that the full foreground uh, goes in front of Sonic, simply go to BGA layer and select the priority as true, save and recompile and now Sonic should appear in front of the, the background one but, in, but behind the foreground. Okay so I think that just about wraps things up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content then please subscribe to the channel.
I'm interested in this. And if you want to support the channel further, I have a Patreon account. You won't go unrewarded. And until next time, farewell.